this has gotten quite complicated because um, I did go over the guilty plea form with Miss Jallo back in September. She's here for sentencing. Um, I maintain that I very clearly <laughs> explained what the agreed recommendation would be, but Ms. Jallo is saying she didn't fully understand that she would have to follow through with recommended treatment and has a lot of reservations about that. And I think she has expressed that she would like to just address the court herself and express her wishes regarding sentencing. And that was sort of where the conversation was left off because, uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, Ms. Jello, do you mind unmuting your device, ma'am? Yes. Okay, so Ms. Jello, your case is 2A58923. Um, you entered a guilty plea on... Um, September 20th, Your Honor. Yes, September 20th, 2023. It looks like I went over that with you. And then we set sentencing over... Okay, I'm looking at the plea form right now, and it says, no criminal law violations. This is the recommendation of the parties. No criminal law violations. I'll go to alcohol and drug evaluation. Don't go back to South Cinemal. Obtain a chemical dependency evaluation and complete whatever treatment is recommended. That was um, entered, and I accepted that guilty plea. So we're on for sentencing, and presumably you've had that substance abuse evaluation. I'm hearing that you have not done that. No. Is there a yeah, particular yeah, reason? We, sorry, sorry Yaron, I didn't mean to cut it. We've continued this set over sentencing a few times for Ms. Jallo mm -hmm. to get the evaluation. And she has expressed to me that it's just at this point something she is apparently unwilling to do. And so I'm a little bit, yes, I'm not sure how to All proceed. Right. Thank you. Ms. Jallo, why don't you come on camera? I can't see you. Yeah. <laughs> Ms. Jallo, are you telling me that you're just going to you're going to disregard the court's order? Well, I, I don't want to do it. I didn't. I thought my my um, thought on the deferred sentence is that if I didn't do it, I just didn't do it, you know, and I, it stayed on my record. You know, I, I didn't know that I have consequences. I, now, Ms. Jallo. I went over the plea form with you. I know I am thorough in going over the plea form. So I would, if it, I, I'm, I'm certain I don't even need to listen to the audio because it was me who went through the plea form with you, not a pro tem. Um, I'm looking at some of the other cases. So I have, you now have, um, just sorry, the system is moving a little slowly. Just a, for some background, Your Honor, we were initially trying to negotiate with the Burian matter, and we were going to dismiss one of the two cases if she got into drug treatment in another one. So I'm pretty sure she was aware that that was on the table. And you also now have a pending assault in the fourth degree domestic violence, assault in the fourth degree charge, where there is a, it looks like there's a, some kind of ordered effect um, out of Kent. And the Kent, am I reading that correctly? You look at me like you're surprised. The Kent court had ordered you not to possess or consume any alcohol or non-prescribed drugs for some reason. I haven't seen that report. I don't know what they're alleging in that case, but you also have an 82423 PC controlled substance violation. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, my question is, is, is there a particular reason that you have not gotten the substance abuse evaluation? Cause that's what the court ordered. I guess we'll go, I'll go do it, but I'm not going to, I'm just not going to complete treatment. I just know I'm not. I mean, I didn't know that I had consequences if I didn't do it. I thought that it just stayed on my record. The consequences are is that you can get up to 364 days in jail for this. This is a criminal offense, and the party is asked to set sentencing over so that the court can get a copy of a substance abuse evaluation so the court can determine what the appropriate sentence is. The court's not bound by any recommendations that the parties are making. I, the court doesn't have to follow through with, with any recommendations. And I thought it was perfectly reasonable, all things considered, for the, for you to go get a substance abuse evaluation as the parties had recommended. So if the city is recommending a 24-month deferred sentence, that doesn't mean I have to follow that. In fact, you've failed to appear in this case. You have bail posted. 
you're now telling me that you don't want to go get an evaluation. What is the motivation? I mean, obviously, me I, I accidentally okay, forgot court. court. As soon as I found out that I missed court, I went down there and I paid for the bill. If I would have known I had court, I just, you know, I have other things going on in my life, you know? So, I, I mean, it wasn't like I ran. I didn't want to go to court. Do you think I wanted to go pay $500 to get bailed out on this charge? I accidentally forgot about court. People make mistakes in life. Sorry, I'm not perfect. Well, I think that's what the parties were telling me by saying, yes, people make mistakes in life. So give someone a chance. So go get a substance abuse evaluation, follow through with a treatment recommendation and have an opportunity to get your case dismissed. You have, you don't have a clean criminal history. You have criminal conviction. So the recommendation for a deferred sentence by both of the parties is rare for someone with someone with a criminal history. So there's obviously something between the parties that have, they've discussed about you that is that warranted that recommendation. So I, I, I haven't yet followed that recommendation. I need reason to follow that recommendation. It would be perhaps you're going to do something to sh to resolve any issues that these lawyers know about that I don't know about and have the benefit of the dismissal. I absolutely and agree I don't think with that you. The that fourth assault mistakes. should be brought up. I, you I'm, know, I'm sorry, Miss Jello. You don't know this. this you don't know the circumstances behind that. Miss Jello, you've been charged with a crime. My job is to look at your criminal history. You have been charged with a crime. City has found probable cause that you've charged with a crime. It's still pending. But the bottom line is, is you've now been accused well, watch, of a subject violation. I'm not going to be charged with I'm not going to be charged of your conditions with it. And I'm sorry? It didn't happen, so it's not going to... Th that shouldn't even be brought up. Uh, Ms. Jello, I, I, I'm not guilty of it. Tell, I appreciate that you're trying to think that you know what how I should be doing my job, but that's not how it works. The bottom line is, if you're going to go off camera, you have to come on camera. Otherwise, I'm not going to allow you okay, to be Okay, what do you want me to do? Okay, I'll go get the drug and alcohol evaluation. I'm done with this. I'm, I'm done. Person from now on, and I'm setting sentencing over, and you have to get a substance abuse evaluation between now and that sentencing hearing where you have to appear in person. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to allow you to be able to control your court hearing by just removing yourself from the screen or interrupting me. You must appear in court in person in 30 days after having that substance abuse evaluation. Do not miss your court dates in Kent uh, because I don't want you to have a warrant. And then we're going to see, based on that evaluation, what the appropriate sentence should be. Hopefully, still get that deferred so you can get that case dismissed. But then it'll at least have a professional tell me if treatment is appropriate for you. I mean, we don't want to be left guessing. I want to hear what a professional says. So in the course between the time that you pled guilty and today, did you have a chance to speak to court, ser court services about where you can get this evaluation done? I know where I, I can get it. Okay. Okay. You know where to get it. And then here's the thing. When you come here for sentencing, you have to have the results of that evaluation in writing. Normally, that does take time. So you need to get this done as quickly as possible so that they can have their part done for you to bring in the evaluation results here to court. They may ask you to sign a release so that they can send it to us directly. That's between you and the evaluator. But when you come back to court next time, you have to have that evaluation done. Okay. Your next court Are we done? Date, Are we done? We're not done. We're not okay. done. Hello. Your next court date is March 13th at 10:30. Is that a Wednesday night? What did you set up? This is exactly why you are not going to appear in Zoom again, Miss Jello. You are going to be here. Is that a Wednesday, Nessa? Yes, Your Honor, that's a Wednesday. Okay. Night. March 13th at 10.30, you will appear in person at the Tukula Justice Center for hey, Sentencing you then. with your substance abuse. Don't you dare hang up, Miss Jello, or I will order a warrant for your arrest. Well, I mean, what do you want me to do? You told me my next court date is March 13th. What I'd, like you to do, what I'd like you to do is act like you're actually in court. This is the reason why you're not allowed to appear remotely anymore. 
your next, we're going to email you notice of your next court date. If you do not get an email from us by Tuesday, call the court so that we can follow through to make sure that you receive this document. Do you want to speak to your attorneys before you hang up? No. Okay. Come back March 13th here at 1030 with the results of your evaluation so we can go forward with sentencing. You now are free to leave. Thank you.